just make sure you don't overload the pan welcome back to the trail with mushy the cowboy cook today we're going to cook some chicken fried pork steaks yes that's with pork not beef let's get into the video all right we're going to do chicken fried pork steaks now several years ago cookie and i had uh were cooking at an event and he'd gone to a, a um a local grocery store picked up some packs of meat thinking it was the the beef steaks that had been ran through a tenderizer well that's what he picked up but he it didn't there wasn't enough in the counter for him so he walked on down the the refrigerated counter and uh, found some more steaks so he picked up several packs of that so then he had enough for uh, lunch that day or the next day. So we, um, next day we cooked them up and uh, I said, Cookie, there, there's something different about the, these. It has to be two different meats. One was very tender. In fact, we could cut it with a plastic fork. Yes, we do eat with plastic forks on paper plates at the shows. However, we started looking at it and uh, realized one was pork and one was beef. So we were going to cook some the next day. So we went back, him and I went back to the store that evening and um, started talking to the meat guy. And he told us, you know, we'd picked up the beef and pork. And so we asked him what cut of pork it was. And it turned out to be tenderloin that they ran through the tenderizer. So... I have a uh, tenderizer here, hand cranked, that we'll use sometimes if we can't find it already ran through the tenderizer machine. Um, it's from Lums. I'll put a link, Amazon link down in the description for you if you want to go check it out if you want one. But the uh, slice, the cut of meat has to be no thicker than half an inch. So. All you do is just hand crank it, run it through, I'm going to put in some buttermilk, use buttermilk, milk, whatever you got. But this works great. A little cheaper doing it this way if you want to cut the meat yourself and uh, run it through this if you want to pick you up a tenderizer. So from then on, I said, Cookie, from now on, it's got to be pork steaks. Um, just because it was just so tender and like I said, you could cut it with the plastic fork it just takes a quick minute to run it through however much you want you know or how many people you're going to feed and then I took a cup and a half of flour, which I figured this would be enough, and I used one and a half tablespoons of uh, cornstarch, and that gives it a little extra crispiness. I put in some garlic powder, some salt and pepper. Uh, lots of times we'll use Kent Rollins Red River Ranch original seasoning in it. Um, put whatever seasoning you want, however much you want. So once, once they've soaked a little bit, we're just going to flour them up. Put them on the plate while I got, get the other ones done. In fact, uh, 
Mosey and I and Randy when we were at the uh, Benson Mule Days for Friday night dinner, like I told you on another video, we served dinner about 10, 30, 11 o'clock that night. And uh, one girl, I guess she was probably 12 or so, maybe 13, uh, she just fell in love with it. Asked me how we fixed it. And I told her, uh, we didn't run it through the tenderized, we'd already bought it tenderized. But I told her just real simple, you know, the in the buttermilk and flour it up and lightly fry it. And as soon as I told her, she was like, you hear that, Mama? Wanting Mama to cook some for her whenever they get back home. But it's always been a, a good dish for us. You know, down in Texas, that's probably the state dish down there. Well, it's our probably go-to dish on the wagons. People really enjoy it. Uh, today I'm not going to make gravy, but um, I'll make gravy sometime down the trail, but lots of times we will make gravy. Um, we'll do potatoes, um, maybe some beans with it. Usually uh, sometimes some scratch made biscuits. Kind of mainly you know whatever time we have and what is going on and how many people we're trying to feed as to uh, what we put to go with it like I said it just takes a quick minute to put them in some milk and get them floured up Alright, I've got the oil heating up. We'll come back in a minute. I'll show you frying it. I've got my meat turner to turn them over. And, uh, and then we'll cut them up and taste them see how they are. Here's the first batch. And just let them do their thing. On, this, on these, what I do is I'll let them cook, flip them, you know, I'll, I'll pull it up, check, and uh, turn it once, and then after a few more minutes, check see if, you know, the second side is done, but see, I'm seeing some brownness and some crispiness under there. That's not quite brown enough. When you are cooking over a open flame like this, be real careful not get the flame too high and where you're splashing oil up over the pan, that's when you can um, have a grease fire and all kinds of bad things will happen. So if you do, if flames do start getting high, don't turn it, don't do nothing. The more you mess with it, the worse it will get. Just let the wood die down. It, it just takes 15, 20 seconds and the, that flame will die down. But don't go in there and start poking the fire and trying to um, get it to die down because all it's going to do is get even higher. When you start seeing the juices coming up to the top, that's really your indicator. Oh yeah. 
and hear that sizzle. When we uh, cooked them at the uh, mule days, I think we fixed right, almost between 40 and 45 steaks. And they all got eaten. We had that and potatoes. Really good, really good meal peach cobbler cake almost done on that second side alright I'm going to get these off and then we'll be right back and uh, taste it and and see how they are. Alright. I cooked up the second batch. There's all of them. I've got a metal fork, but a plastic one would would uh, cut it. Very tender. Not overcooked. That would make it um, a whole lot less tender if you really overcooked it. Um, you don't have to run it through a tenderizer because it is a tenderloin and that cut is very tender to begin with. Um, but if you do have a tenderizer, definitely run it through that. Or if you are able to find it in a store. Sometimes most stores just don't have it in pork. They'll have it in beef. But not in pork. But try it. Um, like I said, down the trail I, we'll do some homemade gravy. And um, whether it's green beans, potatoes, mashed potatoes... Um, whatever to go with this, but this is a staple on our wagons. In fact, most every show, we typically will cook these. Very good, very good. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video on our chicken fried pork steaks. Now, I know down in Texas, it's beef steaks. And like I said, we have done beef in the past, but once we came across this pork, which is a tenderloin cut of the of the pig, that's what we have stuck with. Like I said, it's very tender, and when you run it through the tenderizer, it's even more tender. Um, we cut it with a plastic fork. Sometimes we make gravy, sometimes we don't. I will make some gr a homemade gravy down the down the trail on another video, but just about every show we do, we'll do the chicken fried pork steaks. Maybe every other show, but we do it a lot. We really enjoy it. The people we feed enjoy it. You ought to try it at home, whether it's inside or outside on your side burner on a grill or over a fire but just try it if you like videos like this please subscribe if you haven't already share it with a friend like it ring the bell and mushy the cowboy cook we'll see you down the trail